The Hudson Bay Inland Sea is rapidly altering due to climate change. It is expected to be ice covered for shorter periods in the future. This will impact wildlife and influence traditional aboriginal ways of life. It is also creating opportunities for industrial development. The Hudson Bay Inland Sea, the largest seasonally ice covered sea in the world, consisting of the Hudson Strait, Fox Basin, as well as the Hudson, James, and Ungava Bays. Its vast seascape at the heart of the Canadian landscape receives fresh water from an area covering just under 4 million square kilometers, extending from the Canadian Rockies to Labrador. The territory of Nunavut and the provinces of Quebec, Ontario, and Manitoba make up the coastline of the Hudson Bay Inland Sea, which is home to over 30 communities primarily of Aboriginal descent. The provinces and territories surrounding the bay all have northern development plans which aim to provide local economic development and meet a growing worldwide demand for natural resources. The Hudson Bay Inland Sea Initiative is a sustained effort to explore and advance ways to connect the bay through innovative management and governance that can adequately anticipate and adaptively manage the risks and opportunities associated with the transformations being experienced by this region. The Inuit and Cree still practice some of their traditional ways of life, which includes subsistence hunting and fishing. A traditional knowledge study, completed in the 1990s, outlines their relationship with 138 animal and 36 plant types. They continue to rely heavily on the inland sea's rich and diverse marine and terrestrial wildlife for their well-being. The region is likely to see increased exploration for and development of base and precious minerals, further development of hydropower, and expansion of wildlife and Aboriginal culture tourism. Oil reserves have been claimed on Southampton Island, and parts of the coast and seascape may have oil deposits. The intent is to increase and integrate development of energy, mining, forestry, tourism, and transportation by stimulating billions in expenditures. Construction of transportation infrastructure is one key to realizing this. The inland sea may gain an importance for shipping. With investments and a longer sea ice free season, the port of Churchill could become the North American Arctic gateway to Europe and Asia. The prospect of all weather roads, such as the 1100 kilometer road from Gillam, Manitoba to Rankin Inlet, Nunavut, will stimulate potential mining and tourism. The government of Quebec has significant plans for resource development on the east side of Hudson Bay. Ontario's development strategy for its northern region focuses on building capacity of local communities and enhancing infrastructure to enable economic development primarily in the natural resource extractive sectors. Large-scale development of the Hudson Bay region is being considered it remains unclear whether and when these grand visions will be implemented. What is clear is that a coordinated and collaborative approach to regional development will result in less opposition and a more sustainable and positive outcome for all parties involved. Although there is currently very little infrastructure and active industrial operations in the Bay, they are expected to multiply. The scale and pace of economic development on the inland sea will be determined by a number of natural resource, socio-economic, and policy factors. The Hudson Bay Inland Sea Initiative will strive to enable long-term strategy and policy action for sustainable development through a collaborative approach across the region. These actions will rest upon a strong foundation of traditional knowledge and science and promote an effective coordinated governance structure built for the 21st century and beyond. The overall goal of the initiative is to facilitate a sustainable future for the present and coming generations of residents of the Inland Sea region within the context of the rapid transformations it faces. A series of Connecting the Bay forms will kick off the initiative where the transformations being experienced and anticipated, as well as potential strategies to manage and take advantage of them, will be discussed. By careful examination of successful governance approaches and policies in other jurisdictions, Connecting the Bay participants will help devise, develop, and implement new innovative management strategies designed specifically for this region.
A shared understanding is essential for improving and maintaining the health of the inland sea and to adaptively manage the many challenges and opportunities that will arise. That is why an open, active exchange of ideas, insights, and advice among its stakeholders will form the foundation of the Connecting the Bay Forum, where representatives from communities, industry, business, and various levels of government, as well as scientific experts, will be equal participants. The Connecting the Bay Forums are being convened by the Nunavut Hudson Bay Interagency Working Group, or NTK, and the International Institute for Sustainable Development with guidance from an advisory committee. As the initiative advances, its collaborators will expand and add valuable insight and direction. Since the potential for an ice-free Canadian Arctic is a very real possibility in the near future, the time to develop responses is now. There are very few places in the world where vision and planning can occur ahead of the development curve. The Hudson Bay Inland Sea is, however, one such example. Making innovative governance and integrated land and marine planning an imperative to ensure a sustainable and resilient future for current and future generations. Despite the challenges, there is a tremendous opportunity to establish a shared vision for sustainability in the region and an adaptive roadmap to guide the journey before options are constrained by significant development and global change.